أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمره ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فهو المهتد ومن يدل الله فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا إنه أصلك الكلام كلام الله إلى حد حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإنما الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة في البرعة وكل برعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى أيضا يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا الصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ومن اهتدى بإحسان إلى يوم الدين سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى My dear brothers and sisters in Islam we start by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one deserving of all praising and we send our salam and salutations upon the most beloved of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon his family, upon his household upon all those who follow him, the Sahabas and all of the righteous people until the end of time. My dear brothers and sisters, we are all sent on the face of the earth to fulfill the one, the one single purpose of creation, and that is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent his noble prophet Muhammad and all of the anbiya before him, alayhum as to guide us and to teach us the way to achieve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They all came with one message, La ilaha illallah. In the beginning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he created Adam alayhi salam, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded all in the heavens to bow to Adam alayhi salam. At that time, at that instant, the one who refused, the one who disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was Iblis. And at that time, he promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to misguide, misguide his creation, the mankind and the jinn from that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided us to and from that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to. He has promised to misguide us and keep us away from that path. And at that time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, for those who follow you, he have created a nar, a jahannam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, tells us in the Quran, Rabbana inna ka man khud tudkhil al-nar faqad akhazaytah wa ma lil-zalimina min ansar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, Our Lord verily whom you have admitted to the fire indeed, you have disgraced him, faqad akhazaytah. And never will those whom you have disgraced are zalimun, will they find any helpers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us here, and this is the opening for this khutbah today, about the fire of Jahannam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the fire of hell as a manifestation of his anger, as a manifestation of his wrath. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us umpteen times endlessly in the Quran and in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the torments and the tribulation and the trials in the fire of Jahannam. Why? So that we may read it in a book and forget about it? So that we may say it to children to keep them disciplined? No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us of, tells us of an-nar 
so that we may develop fear in of our heart. Fear in our heart against the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are two things that motivate mankind. There are two things that are strongly motivating to us. Hope and fear. And both of them are pillars of Iman. Both of them are pillars of Iman. We cannot say we are people who have Iman. We cannot say we are people who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who truly strive to achieve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we don't have fear and hope. Hope for what? Hope for the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hope for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In anything that we do, we always have hope. We work very hard so that we hope that we will live a comfortable life. On the opposite side of that is fear. We fear many things. We don't break the law because we fear going to prison. We pay our taxes because we fear the, we fear the IRS. We keep our mouth closed about certain things because we fear certain things. But the greatest of all fear should be the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fear of losing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fear of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most severe in punishment. And the greatest of that is in the fire of hell. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that he has already created Jannah and Jahannam even before we will see it on the day of Jahannam, on the day of Qiyamah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells us, he said, he said to the Sahabas, if you've seen what I have seen, you would cry more and laugh less. Subhanallah. The fire of Jahannam is something truly, truly, truly horrifying when we start to think about it. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the description of the fire of hell, he said that the fire of hell, its flames are black. 69 times hotter than the hottest flame on the face of the earth. We think of the most, tar- the most tribulation, the, the, the most severe form of punishment we can conceive in our mind. And the fire of hell is beyond that. Where is the fire of hell? We don't know. The scholars, they have different on this. They said it is either in the bowels of the earth, in the depths of the earth, or it is in the, in the heavens. Allahu a'la. The most authentic of this is that we try not to seek knowledge, we try not to think about this since the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, nor Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had told us exactly where is the fire of hell, but they described the fire of hell for us. Let us first look at the arrival of the fire of hell. It is narrated that in the fire of hell, it is related to us by our scholars through the narrations of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the fire of hell will descend on the day of judgment. The fire of hell will descend on the day of judgment like a raging animal. And those were the exact words used, like a raging animal, ready to devour every single thing that it sees. There will be multitudes of chains holding the fire of hell, 70,000 chains. And on each chain there will be 70,000 angels holding down the fire of hell, my dear brothers and sisters. And the fire of hell as it comes to the day of judgment, as it comes there all raging and the angels holding it down, it will look upon mankind. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrated to us, he said that every single human being on that day, when at the sight of the fire of hell, they will fall to their knees. They will fall to their knees and their eyes will be on the ground. Because they do not want to look at the fire of hell out of the fear of the fire of hell on that day. They're afraid that if the fire of hell is to look upon them, then they know at that instant they will be from among the inhabitants of the fire of hell. On that day, none of us will want the fire of hell to look at us. On that day which is so severe that a mother will rip out her fetus and drop it that day. No father will want to see his son, no brother will want to see his brother. We're going to run from everything on that day at the sight of the fire of hell. We will fall to our knees, my dear brothers and sisters. Then the reality will hit us. Then the reality will hit us. In this world, we live our life. We live our life without a conscious thought many a times about what our deeds will bring us on the day of judgment. 
On that day when the fire of hell is before us, the realization will hit our heart. The fire of hell, our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described to us that there will be different levels in the fire of hell for different kinds of people based on their deeds. Based on their deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called, by the, fire, called the fire of hell by many names. Some of the ulama, they differ whether these are the names of the level of the fire of hell or whether these are the gates of hell. Allahu alam. But we know that the fire of hell will be of different levels. The deepest of which will be the hypocrites. And then the Jews and the Christians. Those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his guidance to. And they rejected it. They changed it. My dear brothers and sisters, the fire of hell is something that we must think about. The punishment of Allah must be there in front of our minds at all times. Because we forget that the shaitan, he comes into our minds and tries to take away this thought from us. Because when we do not think of it, we do not try to keep away from it. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that the least punishment in the fire of hell, the least punishment in the, of the fire of hell will be a person under whose feet will be placed coals of fire that will cause his brain to boil. That will cause his brains to boil. With this knowledge that we are given about the fire of hell in this world, on that day when we are given our deeds in our left hand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, When we see the day, when we see the fire of hell on that day, the one who is given his deeds in the left hand, he will say, he will say, I wish, I wish I was not given my deeds. I wish I was not judged. I wish my deeds were not shown to me. Because we don't reflect. The time in this world that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. The fire of hell is the abode for those who are disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in so many forms. My dear brothers and sisters, on that day, the fire of hell will be so huge. This fire of hell will be willing to eat every single thing up. And the thing is that on that day, the inhabitants of the fire of hell, they will be so huge that in the narrations, it is said that the molars of the inhabitants of the fire of hell will be the size of a mountain. The molars. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause the inhabitants of the fire of hell, will make them in such a way so that whatever punishment that they receive from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will be protracted, it will be much more severe than they would have received in this world. The skin will be thicker so that they feel that punishment more. They will feel thirst. And when the water is brought to them, that boiling water as they drink it, it's going to melt every single thing as it's going down. And then they will feel thirsty again and they will call for the water but then when it's brought to them they will try to refuse it but the angels of the fire of hell will pour it down their throat, will pour it over their heads in some narrations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we might ask why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created such a place? Huwa rahman ar rahim Allah is the most merciful. Allah loved his creation more than we can possibly conceive. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create such a place? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created such a place for those who are ungrateful. For those who when guidance comes to them, they turn away from it. For those who when they know that which is right, they allow laziness to overcome them and they do not fulfill the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Among them who will be in the fires, fire of hell will be those who are arrogant. Those who think that they are better than people. Those who like to show off, those who are proud. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned to us that pride is his mantle and show is his cloak. And whomsoever competes with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the fire of hell is there for them. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said on that day when human beings will be so huge and they will be put into the fire of hell and the jinns will be put into the fire of hell and the idols with that which they used to worship in this world will be placed into the fire of hell. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask the fire of hell 
Are you filled? The fire of hell receive. Are there any more? We'll reply, are there any more? Are there any more? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that moment will place his feet above the fire of hell. And the fire of hell will contract and filled. On that day, both Jannah and Jahannam will be filled. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause the fire of hell to hold its size that everyone there will be filled. There will be no places. There will be no place for any more after that point. My dear brothers and sisters, we can go on about the punishment of the fire of hell. We can speak about the pus that we will be forced to drink or the fruits from the fire of hell that will be, f- will be forced to eat that is so poisonous that it will rip and shred every single thing as it is going down. We can speak about those people who used to not wear their hijab and how they'll be strangled on that day. We can speak about those people who used to backbite in this world and they will be facing that punishment in the fire of hell. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us of it all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us of the fire of hell. The fire of hell is there to indeed to strike fear in the hearts of the believer, of those who believe. And on that day, those who used to deny, those who used to deny the existence of the fire of hell when the reality hit them, subhanAllah. They will ask, where is my family? Where are my friends? Where is my wealth? My status? That which I used to be proud of in this world, it is no, not, not any longer here to help me. And they will ask, oh Allah, oh Allah, save us, save us. And it is said that a thousand years will pass. The angels will say to them, save you from what? They will ask, let us go back into the world. The angels say, if he put you back into the world, you will do the same disobedient act as you used to do. So for a thousand years, they will wait on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reply them. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reply them and say, no, in there is your final abode. And there is your final abode. Because at that point, in the fire of hell, a person who witnessed all of the luxuries and all of the happiness and all of the great things of this dunya by just being dipped into the fire of hell, he'll forget it all. So horrifying is the fire of hell. Prophet Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu ku anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us, O you who believe, save yourself and your family from the fire of hell, the fuel of which is men and stones. The fuel of which is men and stones. My dear brothers and sisters, it is so easy for us to get caught up in our lives. It is so easy for us today, subhanallah, to miss our salah. It is so easy for us to not give our zakah and call that which is evil. It is so easy for us today to be lazy in seeking knowledge of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we speak anything that comes from our mouth. We hear people disregarding a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam like if it is nothing and speak as if their words are more important, are more pertinent than the words of Allah and the words of the Rasul. We must pay heed to the things that we do, the things that we say, the things that we hear, the things that we look at because on that day, our tongues that we are so proud of, our tongues at which we used to argue, and which we used to say things, on that day it will be sealed shut and our body will be a witness against us, my dear brothers and sisters. On that day, my dear brothers and sisters, no excuse, no excuse will be enough unless we dedicate our life in this world to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when I say dedicate, dedicate is more than we dedicate anything else in our life. More than we are dedicated to anything else. More than we are dedicated to our jobs and our family and our own life. We should be dedicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For the greatest of reward is for those who strive and struggle for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالَّذِينَ يُجَاهِرُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ بِأَمْوَالِكُمْ وَأَنفُسِكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us about those who struggle and strive, strive with their wealth and themselves for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do we strive? Do we struggle? Do we really not want to go to the fire of hell? Let us ask ourselves that. Let us ask, am I making enough effort? These were the questions of the Sahaba and the Riyadh al-Salihin. 
the people of the inhabitants of the, of the garden of the righteous, these were their questions. Am I doing enough? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, subhanallah, he was the one from his jannah. And he still used to fear the fire of hell so much. The fire whose guardian has never smiled. Who's, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created, Angel Malik, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created him for that singular purpose as a guardian of the fire of hell. He have no remorse for any of the inhabitants of the fire of hell. And as believers, we have some hope for those who will enter the fire of hell. If you die in a state of belief, believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then, only then, there might be some salvation for you. But the one who died in a state of disbelief, especially the one who apostated, especially the one who believed in Allah, who knew of this message, who knew of Allah and knew this guidance, and then turned away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanallah, for them are the worst and most severe of punishment. For the one who died with belief in his heart, there is hope for them. Because some of the believers, some of us who, come, who have come who have committed so many wrongdoings in our life on that day, when they are placed into the fire of hell, subhanAllah, they will be there and they will be praying for their deeds. They will be paying for their deeds. Some of them, some of the narrations stated us for the people who used to miss their salah, they will be punished throughout the entire time. They will be beaten in the fire of hell for that duration of salah that which they used to miss and they used to procrastinate. Every single Muslim, my dear brothers and sisters, there is no argument. There is no argument as to why we can't perform the fara'id, that which is compulsory upon us. If it is our job, leave that job. Seek another one for the sake of Allah, and in that you will find salvation. If it is our family, Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded, Ya ayyu alladheena amanu ku anfusakum. Save yourself first. In another ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that verily your family and your wealth are a source of fitna for you. So if that is a source of fitna, then that should not be an excuse for you not to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing, nothing is an excuse not to be an obedient, completely obedient servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala us, tells us in the Quran and in the ahadith of Rasulullah of many cases of the pious people of the past, the anbiya before, before Rasulullah, and even our pious predecessors, the trials and tribulations that they went through because they believe la ilaha illallah and they never use it as an excuse as to not to be an obedient servant of Allah. That is my message here today for each and every one of us. Let us reflect on our life. Let us see the things which we are striving for, the things that which we are struggling for, and see if it is for the Jannah of Allah. See if we are striving to fulfill our soul duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let not our hearts become hard. Let, our, let not our hearts become hard and turn our faces from any opportunity to be obedient because one of those people on the day of judgment who will be in the fire of hell will be those people who turn their faces away from those in need. My dear brothers and sisters, today in many parts of the Muslim world, our Muslim brothers and sisters are suffering. They're being massacred like animals and killed and they're starving to death. And today we find it difficult to take a little bit from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with to give to them. But let us look back at the way of the Ansar. When the Mujahid, well, Muhajireen, when they came from Mecca, those who had very little bit, what they do? They shared whatever they had, even the little bit that they had. The Sahabas of Rasulullah, when a guest would come to their home, they would go hungry, but feed that guest. Today we have much more than that. How much are we doing? How much are we doing, my dear brothers and sisters? The fire of Jahannam is hungry. The fire of Jahannam is hungry and most, most of the creation of mankind and jinn will be in the fire of hell. Very few will enter the Jannah of Allah. Let us try. Let us struggle to be for among those who are the few who will be the inhabitants of the, fire, of the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prevent us from, be, from being among the inhabitants of the fire of hell. Ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon those who have died before us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant their graves to be spacious for them. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ease their punishments in the grave. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open up the doors of Jannah for them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide our hearts to that which is righteous. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the willpower to overcome our weaknesses. 
things. I'll stick to that which is truth. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continuously continue to guide us to that which is truth. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from the path of those who are evil. Ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa akhir da'wan. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alam. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah al-Kareem wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in wa man ihtada bi ihsanin ila yawmiddin. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ala Muhammadin kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammadin wa ala ala Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid. اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا ورزقا طيبا وعملا متقبلا اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من عذاب القبر وبالعذاب جهنم ومن فتنة المحيا ومامات ومن شر فتنة المصيح الدجال اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة ونعوذ بك من النار اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة ونعوذ بك من النار اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة ونعوذ بك من النار اللهم انصرنا اللهم اغفر لنا اللهم ارحمنا اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين في كل مكان اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين في شيشان اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين في سوريا اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين في بورما اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين في فلسطين اللهم انصرهم اللهم اغفر لهم اللهم اهديهم اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا واغفر لنا وذنوبنا اللهم أنت ربنا يا رب العالمين فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا آمين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين عباد الله إن الله يأمركم بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم واستعينوا يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى أكبر وأقيموا الصلاة إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتاب موقوتا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر